as I said in the introduction, in the talk about your objectives, Tiffany, the very first objective is to get up here and begin speaking before an audience, and when you utter your first word, bam, you have done that. At quantum meetings, when I talk to you, my biggest worry as your evaluator is that you would utter that first word and I wouldn't be able to hear it because you are very soft-spoken. However, I want to laud you because even though you spoke softly, you spoke clearly and audibly. Could everyone, even in the back here, Tiffany, the entire time, we heard every word you said. I was very impressed, especially with your language barrier and with the nervousness of your first speech. It would have been very easy to stand back here and talk to this. Nobody could really hear you and you would have gotten it done, but nobody would know what you said. That was not <laughs> what happened. I was really impressed. You got up here, you delivered it in your full voice. The room is always quiet, but that doesn't mean we can hear you. And today we heard you just fine. I was really impressed with that. I was also very impressed with the fact that you were willing to bring a visual aid with you on your very first talk. That's actually the eighth speech in the Competent Communicator Manual that you work with visual aids. Yet there you were with a book. You picked it up. We're willing to show it to the entire audience and talk a little bit about it. I was really impressed with that bravery to do something that's actually a little further down the line. In watching you and hearing you talk about your language barrier, it made me think about an experience I had. There used to be a Spanish-speaking Toastmasters club right in our area. It was called Dr. Manuel Toro. It doesn't exist anymore, but it was a very strong club for a while, and they did everything in Spanish. I was area director, and I had to go and sit at a Spanish-speaking club, and I don't speak Spanish. And what I realized is that I could still evaluate a speech in a totally different language because they had a visual aid, because they had great body movement and vocal variety, and they had all those things, and I could still evaluate the little things. And what I would like you to consider adding to help you convey your message is a lot more gestures. I know you're very soft-spoken, so the vocal variety will come over time. Next time, you actually stand with really good presence, very good posture. We could see you, and you held yourself very well. If you could come out over here and give us a few more gestures as you're talking, I think it would actually really help convey your message even more. I think about Rosa, and I think about George. When they're up here, even though they may have a little bit of a language barrier, George is up here, bark, 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 bark. Rosa's up here moving around, doing things, and you can really understand them even if they don't quite know the word they want to convey right then. I would highly recommend that for you as something to add pretty quickly. However, you have really good organization, which is, again, that's the very next speech, but you've already thought through that. You had your opening, you talked about your past, your present, and your future. You went to your close. That's great organizational structure, something you're already aware of, and also, Something that is just naturally you a great big smile. Warm facial expressions make us want to watch you and look at you. Make sure you don't lose that because that is going to really accentuate your message. Mr. General Value.